Aha, Endless Runners. The genre that real gamers hate, but aspiring game developers just can't stop making because of the skills they provide, such as generating an endless map. They are called Endless Runners for a reason. But what if I told you there is another way? Hi everyone, it's Bensa here, and today I will explain how I made a truly endless Endless Runner. Without any map generation. What is the most basic shape which can give us an endless level? That's right, a circle. And this is exactly what I made. Well, not exactly, but for simplicity's sake, this is a circle, okay? I added some coins to collect, traps to dodge, and the game is ready. But Bensa, you might ask, what if the player picks up all the coins? Do you spawn new ones? Also, the aim of Endless Runners is that the map is constantly changing, if the player is running around in a circle, they will get bored very fast, especially if they collected all coins and all that's left are the traps. And for that question, I would answer, that's my friend, is where the game becomes truly endless. Because when the player has no more coins to collect, the game just continues and our poor player plays along. He or she dodges a few traps and waits for something to happen. Maybe new coins will spawn or a victory screen will appear, but nothing. Sooner or later they get frustrated and we all know the best way to deal with frustration is aggression. So the player decides to kill off the character by moving him deliberately into a trap. And nothing happens. The character just runs through the trap. That's enough, says our irritated player. I just gonna quit. He or she hits the escape button and... The pause menu does not show up. This is insane. This game is unstoppable. It is truly endless. Unfortunately, our story ends here, because pressing Alt plus F4 does close the game. I think it can be overwritten somehow inside Windows, but it was too much of a hassle. Or even if I managed to disable that command, powering down the PC would still kill the game. Nonetheless, I think it is a good joke. But funny, or annoying this may be, this is not why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to show you the method I used to create this gameplay logic. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that one method you can use state machines in game development is for gameplay purposes. I also mentioned that for gameplay, in contrast with, for example, enemy AI, a state machine is not always the best choice, but it is worth keeping in mind. For this game, I did not use a state machine, however, the solution I came up with very closely resembles one. What does a state machine do? It executes the currently active state and it manages the transition process between the currently active state and the state that is going to be active next based on predefined transitions. Both of these tasks are very important. However, in my case there was nothing to execute on a frame by frame basis as I wanted all my scripts to independently decide how they need to run at a particular moment. So I replaced my states with an enum which needs no execution, but whose values can change based on events in the game. And we might call this value change a transition. Once a transition happens and the new state becomes active, which really means the enum gets a new value, I call an event and inform all other scripts who previously subscribed to the event about the current game state the game is in. If you want to know more about events, I describe them in a little more detail in this video. The scripts receive the enum value and change their behavior accordingly. So we might say that the execution of the currently active state, enum, is outsourced from the state machine, game manager, to all other scripts, and the state machine, game manager, is only responsible for handling the transitions, value changing the enum, and informing the other scripts about what the currently active state, the new enum value, is. Now you can see that by the strictest definition, this is not a state machine, but it is very close, and it comes with the benefits of a state machine. Let's take an example. Here is the path follower script. It moves this large game object along the track. It has a rigid body attached to it, but it has no collider. Instead, the collider is a child object inside the movable game object, and this game object is the one the player controls. 
A rigid body uses all colliders that are in child objects, so this setup is valid and it works. When the collider enters a trap, the collision appears thanks to the rigid body and the player dies. The path follower always moves along the track. However, it should stop moving when the player dies and it also should be stopping during the countdown at the very beginning of the game. Ready, steady and go! These two if statements, the scripts, need to check during every update call. Is the player dead? And are we at the beginning of the game? As more and more situations are added when the path follower should stop, more and more if statements will be added to its update function. Which is stupid, because the path follower does not care about why it cannot move, it only cares about whether it can move or not. And we should not forget that the path follower is only one script, we have dozens more. So it makes sense to manage all these checks, which are based basically transitions inside a single script, the state machine, or in our case, the game manager, and only share the pieces of information with other scripts that are essential for them to function. This way, the path follower only needs to focus on if it should stop or not, and the exact reason for it being stopped is managed by the game manager. This makes the path follower script more understandable and less resource intensive, and the more and more scripts we use that rely on different game events, the more this method pays off. I really hope that you have learned something from this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.